All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. That thrilling story of whaling days and adventure among savages on a strange island. After capturing our young friends from the good ship Paul Parrot, Johnny Robbins and Sue Grange, along with Captain Dalton and old Peg Leg Dickon, Misto, the magician who heads the band of savages on the island, just off the Atlantic coast of Brazil, impressed the savages with his power by performing the trick of changing animal and human in their respective cages, in which he used his black leopard and Annabelle Wilson, who was cast away on the island with our friends from the Paul Parrot. In the nick of time, old Paul Parrot himself has led the crew of the Paul Parrot to the rescue, and open warfare ensues. While the battle is at its height, Misto and Briny, the hook-handed first mate of the privateers, make for the privateer's camp on the other side of the island. Knowing that Briny has the diamonds, which he pillaged from the good ship Paul Parrot, Johnny and Sue also head out for the privateer's camp in an effort to recover the diamonds. It is night now, and Johnny and Sue are in the jungle. They stand horror-stricken, gazing at two flaming eyes coming toward them. Oh, oh Johnny, it can't be Mr. Black Leopard. No, the Black Leopard was inside the magician's cage when we left. Listen, Johnny, that doesn't sound like the Black Leopard to me. I can see it now. It's not black at all. You're right, Johnny. What can we do? What is it? I know what that is. In these parts, like in South America, it's called a jaguar. Now I can see it's plain. And look, Johnny, it's limping. It sure is. It's carrying its left front paw in the air. Johnny, it doesn't seem to be wild. Look how it stands before us. It seems as though it's trying to tell us something. You're right, Sue. It's a big thorn in his foot. That's what he's trying to tell us. He can't get it out. If we could only do something to help him. We can do something to help him. I'm going to get that thorn out of his foot. Oh, Johnny, it's too dangerous. I'll take that chance. Johnny, be careful. I will. I'll have to take this kind of easy so I won't be afraid. Nice boy. Take it easy. Maybe if I pat his neck, he'll see what I want to help him. There, that's a nice boy. Hmm, he seems to like that. Oh, Johnny, do be careful. It's all right, Sue. Come over here. Do you think it'll be safe? Sure, the jaguar's all right. He knows we're going to help him now. You keep patting his neck, and I'll see what I can do about his foot. There, that's a nice boy. Yes, sir, it's a big thorn stuck in the bottom of his foot. If I can get hold of it, I may be able to pull it out. There, I think I can get it now. Easy now. There, it's out. Look, he's licking his foot where you pulled out the thorn. Look at the way he's licking my hand. He's thanking you, Johnny. Why, he's as tame as a kitten. Don't fool yourself. He's not as tame as a kitten. But even animals are thankful when someone does something to help them. Now maybe he'll go away and leave us. It doesn't look as though he wanted to go away. Well, Johnny, we can't stand here. Remember, we started to go to the other side of the island to the privateer's camp. That's right, Sue. We've got to find out where Miss Owen Briney went. Come on, let's get going. Goodbye, Jaguar, old fella. We hope your foot feels better. Look, it's following us. Yes, sir, it wants to go with us. Gosh, I guess we can't stop him if he wants to follow us. You know, Johnny, come to think of it, I haven't heard any shots lately. The noise back at Misto's camp just seemed to quiet down all the Yes, Mr. Grange, we've routed those devils for fair. Blow me down, we'll not be bothered with them for a while. It looks like we got here just in time, Captain Dalton. Aye, thanks to you and Paul Parrott. We wondered where he'd gone to, but how in the world did Paul lead you to the camp, Mr. Grange? Well, sir, back at our camp on the beach, I had organized what was left of the crew, and we were about ready to start looking for you when Paul Parrott came fluttering back into camp, squawking, Blarsted pirates! Blarsted pirates! And I immediately realized that something had happened. So we all followed Paul Parrott back here, and you know the rest. He's a smart bird for fair. Ah, smooth sailing, smooth sailing. Ah, ah. I hope you're right, pal. We've had enough rough days for fair. It's about time we saw smooth sailing, and you may lay to that. Captain Dalton, where's that leopard? Don't worry about the leopard, Mr. Grange. It's in that cage over there. Oh, blow me down. I almost forgot Annabelle Wilson's in the other cage. We'd better get her out. And where are Sue and Johnny? We don't have to worry about them right now. I'm sure they're safe. Blow me down, I hope so. I saw them heading for the jungle when the fighting began. Now that the fighting's over, they'll be coming back. I don't know. I don't feel so good about it. You know that cabin boy as well as I do, Captain Dalton, and he's not one to run out on a fight. Uh, you're right there, sir. A braver lad never lived. 
But he most likely took Sue into the jungle so she wouldn't be injured. Now, if I can see how to get this cage opened, we'll get Annabelle Wilson out of here. Who is that? It's Captain Dalton, Miss Wilson, and we've come to let you out of here. Oh, Captain Dalton, I was so afraid something awful happened to you all. I saw the fighting when it began from the cage here, but after those campfires burned out, I didn't know whether you were successful in driving away those savages or not. We drove them away all right, and we've most likely seen the last of them. Wait just a minute, Miss Wilson. I'll have this cage open. There! You're free once again. And I'm thinking we'd all better stay together from now on. Oh, thank you, Captain Dalton. It seems so safe when you're around. Oh, blow me down, Miss Wilson. You're exaggerating. I'm only one of the crew, I am. And we'd have been lost for fair. But this time it was Paul Parrott himself who saved us. Aye, the blooming bird led Mr. Grange and the rest of the crew right to where we were when we needed him most. I can't help thinking about Sue and Johnny. Surely they should be back by now, now that the fighting's over. Yes, they should be. I'm beginning to worry about him myself. I'll go look for him, Captain Dalton. I'll find Johnny and Sue. No, Dickon, as I said before, from now on we're all going to stay together. Blow me down, we're not going to be separated again, none of us. I think you're right, Captain Dalton. And once we return to the Paul Parrot, we should try to put her in repair as soon as we can and float her off this beach to sail for home. Aye, sir, that's exactly what we're going to do. Dickon, tell the rest of the crew to follow us. Aye, sir. Avast me, Artis! Heave to! Make ready to follow the captain! Aye, aye, sir! Aye, 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 keep to! Keep to! Now, listen, men. Men, first off, we've got to find Johnny and Sue Grange. They can't be far in the jungle. Once we find them, we'll make tracks for the good ship Paul Parrot and see about putting her in repair. I aim to set sail from this island as soon as we can. So, step lively, mate. Aye, 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 aye. All right, Mr. Grange, you and Miss Wilson stay with me. Dickon and the rest of the men will follow right behind us. It shouldn't take us long to find Sue and Johnny, but we can't waste any time. It seems like we've walked for miles, Sue. We sure ought to be near the privateer's camp by now. I hope so. I'm getting awfully tired. And the jaguar has stayed right behind us all this way. Yes, we've certainly made a friend out of him. Wait a minute, Sue. We must be getting close to the ocean again. I hear the sound of the surf. Yes, we must be getting near the end of the jungle. We are at the end of the jungle. I can see now. And look, there's a campfire down on the beach away. I wonder if it's the privateer camp. It must be unless there's someone else on the island. Well, there's only one way to find out. We'll get closer and, and maybe we can make out who that man is by the fire. If only this jaguar wasn't with us. He's liable to give us away if we get too close. That's right. If there was only some way we could keep him from following us. If I could only make him understand. Jaggy, old fella, you stay here like a good boy. Sue and I have some work to do. Oh, he can't understand you. You never can tell. <laughs> Stay here now, Jackie. Come on, see. We'll see if he minds us. He certainly is. He's standing there watching us. All right, let's hurry now and be awfully quiet. Now I can see who it is, Johnny. This is the privateer's camp, all right. And that's that man, Misto, standing by the fire. And he's talking to some of the crew from the privateer ship. But I don't see that briny with the hook hand anywhere. Quiet, Sue. Maybe we can hear what he's saying. Now, look here, men. We don't know what's happened to your Captain Kosh. But I take it you'd like to get off this island. I'd blow me down, we would. All right, then, listen to me. Your first mate, Briny, has taken some of the men and is circling the beach. We're going to take charge of the Paul Parrot to see if they can put her in repair. If we stick together... We can all leave this island, and Captain Dalton and his crew can remain here for all we care. So that's what they're up to. They think they can take over the Paul Parrot, eh? Oh, that's awful. And they'd leave us all here on the island. Not if I can help it, they won't. Look. Do you see what I see? Where, Sue? Coming up the beach. It's Misto's Black Leopard. It is. How do you suppose he ever got out of that cage he was in? I don't know, but he did somehow. Scuttle my ship. What's this to coming up the beach? Don't do anything to frighten him. He won't bother you. That is my Black Leopard. I expected him to show up about now. He can find me on any part of this island. Blow me down. A tame leopard? Oh, no. Not a tame leopard. Merely a trained leopard. And he is only vicious when I so will it. Blackie, where are you going? Well, that's funny. The leopard usually comes to me. There must be someone hiding nearby. But don't worry. 
If there's anyone spying on us, my black leopard will find him. Come, we'll follow him. Oh, Johnny, did you hear what Misto said? Yes, and that means they're coming up this way. Oh, no, what'll we do? Well, I don't exactly know. If we run, they'll be sure to catch us. Look, Sue, the jaguar's coming this way, too. Oh, go back, Jay, go back. No, it's all right, Sue. He's going right past us. And now he's stopping in front of us. Do you know what, Johnny? Yes, I'm thinking the same thing. We helped him once, and now he's going to help us. That's right. Look how he stands there, motionless. And the black leopard is coming straight this way. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, he's going to protect us from that black leopard. What's going on there? It's another animal fighting with your black leopard. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, this is awful. Oh, that poor jaguar. Poor jaguar nothing. He's got the black leopard down. A friend in need is a friend indeed. And the jaguar is certainly proving to be a friend to Sue and Johnny. He's repaying them now for removing the thorn from his foot by protecting them from the black leopard. But what's going to happen next? Will Briny and his renegades be able to take charge of the good ship Paul Parrot? Will Captain Dalton and the rest of our friends find Johnny and Sue before Misto and his men can do them harm? The answers to these questions can be found only by listening to the next transcribed episode in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Be sure to be listening for it, and until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye.